So can everybody see that? Can people see that? Yes, Jane, we can. Thank you, thank you. So um, just at the top there, an explanation of our organisation. So I'm going to say a little bit about the aims of the event. But before I do, I just want to say a little bit, uh, a few things to that slide. One is a little bit of a health warning about acronyms, abbreviations and jargon. Um, this area of work is full of them. And uh, I would ask you to challenge us if we do um, go into jargon and, not, and don't explain ourselves. But the, the, this, this slide, VCSE, so we're talking about voluntary community and social enterprise sector. And we're also taking into consideration that the faith sector is part of the VCSE. So I will talk about VCSE and integrated care system we'll talk about the ICS. We could also have put BSOL in there, which the first time I saw that, I thought, what on earth is it? But that is Birmingham and Solihull. So the second thing to say is this is a very complex environment. And we know that some people in this meeting will know a lot about ICS and some people will know nothing. And we're assuming that you know nothing. We're just trying to be very sort of clear simple and straightforward about what the ICS is and, and the potential relationship with voluntary and community sector. There's some things that we can be really clear about. So we know that there will be 42 ICSs. We know that we will be in Solihull part of the Birmingham and Solihull ICS, but some things are very much still evolving. We know, for example, that ICSs were supposed to become a statutory body in April. That was supposed to be going through Parliament. And now that's pushed forward to, to July. So this is very much a dynamic um, movement. We know that there's certain structures that are being talked about. But again, it's dynamic in the way that the VCSE will be embedded. So today, is very much the start of the conversation in Solihull, although I know some of you have been talking about uh, the ICS in other forums. In some areas, it's a lot more progressed. There have been different geographical cohorts talking about this for, for some time. But in Coventry and Warwickshire and in Birmingham and Solihull, we're part of the third cohort. So the conversations uh, are, are fairly recent in many ways. So very much wanting to hear your views about how the VCSE can be embedded into the, the ICS. So I'm just going to do some introductions. Um, I've mentioned myself, area manager for Solihull and Stratford District, been in, in the voluntary and community sector for 20 odd years, been involved in a lot of collaborations, but I suppose the most relevant to this piece of work is my work around mental health. I'm part of the programme board in Coventry and Warwickshire looking at transfer, transformation around community mental health and how voluntary and community sector plays a much bigger role in terms of early prevention in that, that whole agenda. So I have some understanding of what we needed to put into place to enable voluntary and community sector to play a more dynamic role. So that is uh, me. I'm going to pass over to Deb Saunders just to introduce herself at this point. She's going to be talking us through a little bit later what um, the ICS is and, and the, the role of the v VCSE. So Deb, if you just want to introduce yourself. OK, thank you, Jane. Um, hello, everybody. Good to see you here this afternoon. Um, my name is Deb Saunders. I'm working with Carver on this project because of my background in both health and the third sector. So I've worked, I've worked in both. Um, I am at the moment chair of a, a charity in Warwickshire, and I'm, I've also been working on rolling out a long COVID um, support group across Warwickshire. So um, I have experience, as I say, in both fields. I've worked in public health as a senior manager for many years. Um, but have also always worked in the volunteer sector as well. So a foot in both camps, speaking both languages, we hope, we hope. 
Thank you, Deb. But great to see you, and and great that you're you you have an understanding of both cultures, which is fabulous. Um, unfortunately, Carol Herity can't be with us. She's unwell. Uh, we were going to have the double act from the clinical commissioning group, but we only have Carol. But we're very very happy to have you, Carol. So, do, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, one Carol instead of two. Um, so yeah, my name's Carol Andrew. I work for Birmingham and Solihull CCG. I've just started a new role um, as a partnership development manager working for Solihull Place. Um, I've worked in Solihull since about, mm, gosh, 2004, I think, um, when I started working for the council. And then I went and did a joint role with the council and the CCG. And I've kind of come back to a joint role now, um, just focusing on Solihull rather than the whole of of Birmingham and Solihull so I've worked across all age groups and I've worked um, and commissioned voluntary and community sector and work with communities so I bring some experience but my main focus of work has been with councils and, and within health. Thank you Carol and Carol's going to talk us through the part of the presentation which is about place-based partnerships. So not on the um, list but just uh, I know she's in attendance we have got Steph Blockham from BVSC, another, another acronym there, Birmingham, is it Voluntary, Voluntary Service Council? They're our equivalent in Birmingham. And Steph has been leading on the ICS work in Birmingham. So Steph, I don't know if you, if you're, if you just want to pop up and say hello. Yeah, thanks Jane. Yeah, so it's, it's Stephanie Blockham, I'm Health and Social Care Manager at Birmingham Voluntary Service Council. And uh, yes, yeah, supporting this program of work along with my colleague who can't be here today, but uh, Stephen Raybold, who's programs director as well within BBSC. Um, so yeah, really pleased to be here and hope you can add some contributions in the session. Uh, and just to say, uh, BBSC, Stephanie, and in Birmingham, they're just one tiny little step ahead in, in terms of having this initial initial conversation just before Christmas. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll bring Stephanie in at, at at some points where she can explain how they what, what the next steps are. Um, and also just to say I've got my colleague uh, Aline Boblar also here who's doing the technical side of things, uh, which I'm exceedingly pleased about. So uh, Aline, I don't know if you just want to pop up and so people quite a lot of people already know you, but it'd be nice to see your face. Hello everyone, Aline Bobla. I'm the delivery manager for Stratford District and for Solihull here. And uh, thank you very much for your vote of confidence, Jane. I am starting with playing with breakout rooms in Zoom. So please bear with me if anything goes slightly out of, uh, out of timing today. Thanks, Aline. I do have the confidence in you. So uh, just a few housekeeping things, I think Pretty much everybody seems to be on mute. I think most people are used to Zoom by now. Use the chat function to share thoughts and comments, and we will try and respond to questions. Aline's going to keep an eye on that. Or you can use the hand icon if you wish to pop up and ask a question. And please be aware the session is, is being recorded. So if you do want to take your cameras off, please do so. Uh, so over to the agenda for, for today's meeting. So we, the structure of it is, is that we're going to have um, presentations first around the VCSE perspective, and then Carol is going to talk around the CCG perspective and what is already in place in terms of the place-based work. Then we are going to have a comfort break, and then we're going to go into two breakout sessions. So we have put most of the emphasis on those breakout sessions because we really want to hear from you about how it's best to engage the VCSE into the ICS. So um, I think that's all I'm wanting to say. So I'm going to go over to the slides for Deb. So Deb, if you want to tell me when you're ready to move on, after each slide. Well, so I get to say the famous Chris Whitty words then. Yeah, you do. Next, next slide, please. Yes, not yet though. <laughs> okay, so um, hello again, everybody. And I, I've got the um, job of trying to explain something that isn't fully formed yet. 
and not everybody is quite sure um, how it's going to be formed. However, integrated care systems are the new partnerships that are going to replace CCGs. And as Jane's already said, the, the timing for it to become statutory has been pushed back from April to July. Um, but the, they will be in, they are in place. The board is in place at the moment in shadow form, and it will they will continue to be in place and continue to recruit over the next few months. Um, it's still a work in progress, as I'm saying. So that gives us an opportunity in the in the VCSE to influence maybe some of the shaping, some of the some some of the uh, programs and it is aiming to be a more inclusive and responsive body than perhaps we might have experienced as ccgs uh, next slide please um so they have four aims proving outcomes and none of these will come as a surprise to anybody improving outcomes in population and healthcare, tackling inequalities in outcomes experience and access, enhance productivity and value for money. I think between you and me, everybody, that's where we come in. Um, and help the NHS support broader social and economic development. There's a, there's a big um, aspiration for stronger local partnerships with health. And, and um, I think these will require and it's something that we as a sector need to think about um, responsive communication systems and how those are going to, you know, how those are going to work in in reality. OK, so next slide, Jane. So the role of the. Oh. Yeah, the role of the VCSE in the ICS is it's seen as an integral member um, uh, and. And I think there is a, a genuine, um, a genuine feeling that that what the sector has to bring is really important. And I think it's important for us to realise what our our real pluses are in this field, what our, what we really really bring to this party that nobody else does. And that's expert knowledge. Yes, we we're especially good at reaching into communities that are marginalised. Um, vulnerable that don't don't actually historically engage with formal structures. Um, I think I think the VCSC is seen as a potential catalyst um, between the statutory organisations and on the ground. What's actually going on on the on the very ground, if you like, the very, where the very small organisations are working. And actually, don't don't have the time or the or the resources to engage at a higher level. But there are the VCSC. There are VCSC organisations that know about that and can and can help that. And of course, we are really, really good at finding creative ways for improving health and well-being for those with the poorest health outcomes. For for lots of people, but especially for those with the poorest um, health outcomes. Next slide, Jane. Jane. Okay, so this is this is I'm hoping a picture that you'll be familiar with. It's one that was developed um, during COVID nineteen. I'm led to believe, but I think it really illustrates everything that I think we're hoping for, um, and that is how that was a really community led time in the last over the last two years communities really mobilized um, to support and care for vulnerable people in the community in, the, in their community and 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 really really made a huge difference to a lot of people's lives and i think part of the this community response to the pandemic has has really helped raise the profile of what the VCSC and 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 um, really small on the ground positive um, people can actually achieve 
with very little money, very little resources, but but all the all the other um, kinds of um, expertise that they have, and continuing to work together, and it is really important. I think that the partnership element of this will provide leverage for funding opportunities for organisations, because funders are increasingly looking for evidence of partnership working. And the VCSE is the innovative and flexible, your flexible friend that can respond really quickly to, um, to any situation, but we're looking at health here. Okay, next slide please, Jane. So the aims of embedding the VCSC is to enable local health and care leaders to, um, to build a strong and effective ICS, integrated care system, I mean. Collabor collaborating as, a, as an integrated care system will help health and organizations tackle complex challenges. And I think it's, it's where the complex challenges are that we come into our own uh, and improving and shaping services to help tackle the wider determinants of health. So that's all if you, for those that aren't quite sure what the wider determinants of health are, those, that's all the things that actually are really important to make a person healthy. So education, housing, uh, um, welfare, finance, all those kind of things are, are contribute more to health than uh, health, if you see what I mean. It's really important that, 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 we, have, we, that we have those. So, um, and the aim from our point of view is that, that we're stronger together to, to deliver health and care, but also to deliver that, those health and care messages to people that need to hear them. And this is our opportunity to be involved early on in the planning of an integrated care system and, and to help shape delivery and, and to make our voice heard in perhaps a way it's not been heard and to help tackle health inequalities in a more inclusive and on the ground intelligence way. So to actually really be informed by by what's actually going on. So um, I'm trying to think of an example, but something, something um, that I was involved with um, a few years ago was um, doing some research around gypsies and travelers and their ability to access primary care or doctor surgery. And, and we did a bit of um, ringing round. We did a bit of uh, mystery shopper, if you like, and went, went round, uh, prior, all, all practices in a certain area, asking if we could join the practice as a as a new as somebody moved into the area, uh, and then went round and asked if we could join the same practice as a gypsy and traveller. And um, I'm sorry to say that there was only one practice out of I think it was twenty that said yes to the gypsy and traveller, and all twenty said yes to somebody who wasn't a gypsy and traveller. Now that kind of intelligence and information and evidence can actually really really help health to to look at what's going on to make a difference and tackle things I mean it's only a microcosmic thing but that's the kind of that's the kind of influence we can have okay ne next slide please so how how on earth are we going to make this happen so it's hoped that engagement and involvement will occur at all levels. So um, when we're looking at a primary care network, and I'll just say a little bit about primary care networks. In Solihull, there are five primary care networks and made up of 24 GP practices. Primary care networks are, are coming together of groups, clearly groups of GP practices around a population number. So it's round in, round about five, 5,000, is that right, Carol? 5,000 population? I think it is. Anyway, a population number, they come together uh, uh, and it, in order to be able to deliver health again, more efficiently, each GP practice 
has a social prescriber, at least one, some have more than one. And it is, and the social pre prescriber's job is to work with patients one-to-one -one and finding them the best solutions in the community, in the community and voluntary sector for what, what and, and you won't be surprised to hear that a lot of the problems that come are isolation, um, um, loneliness, things like that. So you have one person at least, there are more because there are health and care coaches also in most GP practices at the moment. So these are the people who are on the ground talking with or should be talking with uh, the um, voluntary and community sector in their area. So that's very on the ground, feeding in that information to um, the next step, which will be um, which will be more at a place based thing. And Carol will be talking about <coughs> talking about that. But that's sort of so you're going from your from primary care on the ground to the middle bit, if you like, which is solely whole level. So solely held together, for example, at the moment. And then that is fed up to board level. So that's kind of the, the tiers that, uh, as it's envisaged at the moment. Now, the Birmingham and Solihull um, model is, is a network, a dynamic network model that every, every area appears to have its own model. There is, they, they're all slightly different. So um, the, none of this is is set in stone and this this is just the way that we are developing it here in Solihull and Birmingham. So uh, yes, I think I think that's yeah. So that's that's kind of how it's going to happen. That's how it's envisaged it's going to happen. And that what we will be bringing to the party at all those levels is the data and intelligence. Of course, it's really important therefore that that a, there's a forum for that to happen where organize, VCSE organisations can come together to inform that. And also, it's important that whoever is representing the VCSE at a more strategic level has access to all of that. Um, because what, what we really need to avoid is that whoever is representing or <clears throat> whatever organization is representing uh, the voice of Soli Hull actually is actually doing that and not just talking about their own organization. And that, you know, that again is something we need to talk about and how that's going to be developed. Okay, I think that's that's me, Jane. Thank you very much, Deb. I was just going to add in something about the dynamic alliance. I think why, why we we're talking about dynamic as well is that we were thinking it wasn't just going to be that there would be this one alliance, that there would be regular alliance meetings and there would be the same individuals, that sometimes there would be a need to just talk about one particular theme. So that might be children and young people. So then you would have certain organisations coming in to be sharing their knowledge, uh, insights around that. And that would be their part in the alliance. They would just have a, sort of an, an in and out um, uh, relationship. So it's not just one kind of alliance meeting. But I think these are things for us to talk about the existing structures that exist, which Carol will be doing. And then in our breakout groups, we will be very much talking about well, what is the infrastructure already in Solihull around health, what, what, what exists already. And as you say, Deb, at some point there will be that, that more strategic body. So there is envisaged a VCSE leadership alliance, which will bring the, um, you know, that representation from Birmingham. Birmingham is divided into five places and then the Solihull representation. So there will be that VCSE leadership alliance so as you were saying you've got the pcns then you've got the the solid whole place and the ally the dynamic alliance um and then the moving up to the strategic level but carol's also going to do us a diagram on the, those things yeah. 
Uh, so before we go on to Carol's um, presentation, any questions so far for Deb? And it, again, if you can you either put your hand up or put the question in the chat. Alina, are you able to see the chat if people put? Yes, yes, I am. And at present, no, everybody's listening intently. <laughs> OK. There will be room for more questions at the end of Carol's presentation. So I think we'll move on then, Carol, if you're happy to go on to place-based, what, what are place-based partnerships? Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Jane. Um, so yeah, so I've been asked to talk to you a little bit more about place-based partnerships and what that actually means. Um, I think as Jane has said, um, it's really important to say that these things are new, they're developing, um, and the national guidance around this really leaves quite a lot of the decisions up to a place. So it's very much an evolving picture at the moment. Um, but basically, we use the term place to refer to a geographical area within an ICS. All ICSs across the country are further broken down into places. And in Birmingham and Solihull, we have two places. Birmingham Place and Solihull Place, not surprisingly. Um, and as the integrated care system um, does, they bring together partners from NHS organisations, so hospitals, GPs, community health services, council services, so social care, public health, etc., and third sector partners, that all of those, those organisations, if you like, contribute to the local population's health and care. Could I have the next slide, please? So I just wanted to say a little bit, I've just given you a couple of slides um, which attempt to outline for Solihull who or what kind of organisations are operating at place. And it just gives you a, an idea of how complex this is, actually. Um, so we've got 216,000 people in that Solihull place, two constituencies, 17 council wards, one local authority, which is Solihull um, Metropolitan Borough Council, and at the moment, one clinical commissioning group. We've got three NHS foundation trusts, and we also commission services from Coventry and Warwickshire. Um, we've got a policing unit, a fire station, Solihull Community Housing, 89 CQC registered social care providers, so that's care homes and, and care at home providers, etc. cetera, um, parish and town councils, and then eight, 800 plus active community voluntary and faith organisations and groups. And just a couple more bits about that on the next slide, please. Um, and then we can see we've got um, the school collaboratives, so 76 primary, secondary and special schools, and um, what, what we call locality areas, so north, east and west, each supporting populations of that 50 to 70,000. And we've got five primary care networks that, that are made up of 24 GP practices. Um, and then kind of overlaying that, you know, what we've said we're part of Birmingham Solihull Integrated Care Service uh, System, um, but we're also part Part of Greater Birmingham and Solihull Local Enterprise Partnership and the West Midlands Combined Authority. So I think you can kind of see there's a lot going on across Solihull and the makeup is very varied and the organisations are vast and operate on different levels. So some are very Solihull specific and some are wider or smaller than Solihull. So it's a complicated picture. But that hopefully gives you a bit of a flavour of what, what we're talking about. Could I have the next slide, please? So um, going back to place-based partnership, what do we actually mean? What do they actually do? What are they there for? Um, well, they're responsible, firstly, for understanding the needs of an area. So bringing partners together to get a whole view, not just the council's perspective or health's perspective or the voluntary sector's perspective, but a whole view and then de 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 delivering um, and developing those care, health and care services that meet the needs of those of that area. Um, 
and I think it's it's important to say some things make sense to be delivered across the whole of Birmingham and Solihull because that gives us economies of scale or because they need to be the same across the area. We need that consistency. But other things need to be delivered differently um, because of the needs or the makeup of different places. And there are obviously things that are unique about Solihull and, and those things need to be taken into account. Um, the objectives that place-based partnerships set or the outcomes that they aim for should be developed from the needs of that population and what's unique about it. So again, bringing all the perspectives of different partners together. And because they're focusing on the people in a place rather than on separate services delivered by partners, they are in a really good position to join up services. And that's one of the real drivers around this. And you know, a lot of you will know we've been talking about integrated services for a very long time, and this is a, this is a real driver for the way that we're, we're going to be working differently. Um, and because we've got a complete picture, or should have, so they, they're, they're looking at things that affect people's health and care needs, and as you've heard already, things like education, employment or housing, um, those, those wider determinants of health can be considered, they're not just looking at one aspect. Um, the other thing really important um, uh, to mention, and I think Jane's alluded to this, you know, place-based partnerships will work more meaningfully with communities. That's, a, that's really firm in the guidance um, and it's the right thing to do so that communities have a real opportunity, not just to inform what we deliver, but to support or, or in some cases to lead it um, because some things we know are better shaped or led by communities. And last slide, I think. So this is a governance slide, um, which is, is certainly not set in stone, but we just wanted to give something that could uh, kind of, we could use as a bit of an overview really to give you a flavour of what we're talking about. So this is an attempt to describe the opportunities for um, the VCSE in Solihull to get involved. So there will be an integrated care partnership, which will be Birmingham and Solihull wide, and there is a place for the sector on that on that group and um, there will be as Jane's mentioned a VCSE leadership group or an alliance again that will be Birmingham and Solihull wide and there will also be a place-based partnership board or a, a number of different groups where there will be a place again for the sector and those, that will obviously in this case be Solihull based and then under that there will be programs of work which we've actually got already or some are developing and the sector will be engaged at that Level two. So, for example, we have um, a, a really well established ageing well programme in Solihull, which brings in things like discharges from hospital, carers, falls in older people, care homes, etc. Um, and I know that the, um, the sector are involved in, in certain parts of those projects already, but, but that's kind of developing at the moment. Um, and then Underneath the programmes of work, there'll obviously be things going on at community or neighbourhood level, um, which you might already be involved in or, or will be in the future. So I guess the message here is that there will be lots of opportunities for the sector at lots of different levels to have a voice and to get involved as a, as a key partner. And that's my last one, but we've got just a, an opportunity for any questions on that, if anyone has any. Thank you very much, Carol. So um, anybody got questions either in the chat or if you just want to ask them and Aline's keeping a, an eye on the chat. There's a, a couple of points that have been made on the chat from, from Chet and Lisa as well about whether Solihull should be split into two or three areas potentially. Um, as the, the Alliance should reflect the whole system as well. But at the same time, Chet is also raising the fact that it could be difficult uh, to, to work as an alliance if meetings are held in silo. So I don't know if there's any information about splitting Solihull into different areas or if Birmingham would be more than three or four areas as well. Yeah, so I, I, I can kind of answer that. We are thinking about that at the moment. Um, it, it's something that obviously you've got different things going on in different areas of Solihull and again a bit like the integrated care system it might be more appropriate to do things in smaller areas so that's certainly being considered. Okay um, if that doesn't answer your points Lisa and Chet feel free to to let us know in the chat or raise your hand. 
uh, Brendan has also this raised the point of Solihull being one place, whereas five areas in Birmingham may end up drowning the voice of the Solihull borough. And he's making a lot of points as well around the, the clean, clearing up and cleaning up that will have to be done post COVID era and the risks of not being able to, to plan other elements or the negativity of the other pandemic or centralization impacting on those initiatives and the, the top-down direction. I don't know if you can read the, the message there for the three of you, Carol, Deb, and, and Jane. There's quite a lot here from Brendan. Anyone would like to pick up on this? I'll respond. Um, just on the point of uh, the Solihull and five areas of Birmingham, um, I think, uh, there's a couple of things I'd say about that. I think firstly, um, Solihull has got a really well-established partnership and we're, we're doing really well in terms of how we're kind of lining ourselves up for this new way of working. And so I think there, it is probably fair to say that Birmingham are learning quite a bit around what we've been doing. Um, and there is a real awareness um, of... Solihull's voice and the importance of that voice and it not being drowned out by the, the size, if you like, of Birmingham. So it's certainly something that we're very aware of within the place team. Um, and we 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 um, strive to make sure that that doesn't happen constantly. So it, it's part of my role, certainly, um, and, and, and the people in the place team to make sure that doesn't happen. But I, I completely take on that point. I think it's important that we that we are aware of that. I can see Thanks. there's two participants that have raised their hand. So Brandon, did you want to did you want to come in there? Yeah, I mean, I put my note in there and also really enjoyed working with Carol uh, early in about this time last year it started. So on the ground joint working can work really, really effectively. And I think we've got a good track record on that, which I'd make in my notes, particularly with the council and with the third sector on the ground, proper open discussion, partnership working, and all the things that have been said. The problem with something like this, which is a big strategy, is a lot of it centrally determined, comes through national government negotiation and consultation. And by the time as humble people on the ground um, are invited along, quite a lot of it feels like it's already been agreed. And real co-production can be more in the uh, observance than the actual uh, uh, undertaking. So we've got to find ways of avoiding that happening. Uh, and also, I think that it's out there at the moment. There's a lot of disruption. Uh, our GP surgeries are not working effectively for the ordinary person. They're, they're working to clear a backlog of loads of, of demand and deferred health and other care, uh, which is really important. But my point there about sort of like a sort of like a planning blight, to try and really integrate and do meaningful work, it's going to be a real challenge. And uh, as long as we're aware of that, um, because I think the clear up from after COVID, and even assuming we're going to really get going now after yesterday's announcements, is huge. There's a lot of things being disrupted, and truly innovative thinking about new ways of delivering things would be really welcome. And I'm not even uh, I, I, that will be the key thing actually on the grounds, how do you deliver support to say carers accessing preventative healthcare when they can't access any? Um, and what new development therefore might be put in place? You know, really where it, where it works well is when it's on the ground and it's dialogue. Last point about this five to one thing. We had a number of meetings about vaccination rollout. They work really, really well with our colleagues in Birmingham, who are much bigger than we are in Solihull. However, the reason they worked really well was there was one person in Birmingham and there was one person in Solihull there. And we worked as partners trying to resolve things and met outside the meeting. If I go to a meeting or we get involved where there's five people from um, Birmingham or one person in Solihull, there's no way that that would, would, would enable that kind of partnership working. Um, so I'm not assuming that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying we've got to be careful it doesn't. And that's me done. Thank you very much, Brandon. Um, there was somebody else that had their hand up. Did they? I, I can't see who it was, but wh whoever it whoever it was, please do come onto the screen. Uh, Stephanie has uh, Steph has put some yeah. um, has put her hand up. At the same time, there is also a comment, a further comment from Chet on his previous point around the this theme, um, 
the dev different levels of dep deprivation and uh, struggle within various areas of, of Solihull and the north versus the south of the borough, for example. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to pick up on that, but there's also different size, as per Lisa's point as well, different size of uh, population also in the various areas. So the split of the region could be depending on the situation of the residents there or the volume of residents there. I don't know if anybody wants to pick up on that now before we go to Steph. Okay, Steph, if you want to ask your question, thank you. No, that's fine. Just, yeah, just obviously um, taking on board all of the, the comments that you said, I do appreciate as well, you know, just ensuring that through this program of work that we're not losing the voice of Solihull um, and that people don't build up because we've got five places in, in Birmingham and, and therefore, you know, some high representation there that we won't um, ensure that we're working together with partners in Solihull and, and what we have been doing so far with Carver and, and we'll strengthen over time um, to ensure that people do feel that they have an equal opportunity to be involved in, in those conversations and to be involved in as the ICS develops. Um, and just to add as well, so we've had our place-based meetings in Birmingham, we have had obviously five uh, for each of those um, in December. Um, and what we'll be ensuring as we move forward is all of those conversations that happen in each place of Birmingham and Solihull are joined up and that's a kind of almost a wider network of voluntary community um, sector organisations across the whole of Birmingham and Solihull who want to be involved in these discussions um, and building on any existing networks that, as, that exist in place. Um, and the Leadership Alliance group essentially will be populated through, through those um, organisations uh, and it could change over time depending on what some of the priorities are that emerge through the ICS um, and those different work streams that evolve in time and pathways will be an opportunity for representatives in that leadership group which again can change depending on um, who wants to be involved and um, will have an opportunity to be you know involved in those discussions of the, the different work streams and pathways. It will, so it will be something that will be fluid. Um, and we took the approach, which was the national uh, model really that came through NHS around the alliance and around um, embedding the, the voluntary community sector um, and not having it as a closed leadership group. So it wasn't, as Jane said earlier, it's not just specific representatives that remain those same people involved in those discussions that it will be able to change over time and different organizations can come on board through regular meetings. So there'll be the leadership group that will meet regularly but then there'll be the place-based meetings that will also be regular as well that will feed into that. Um, so hopefully people's voices all the way from the grassroots level that will, will have an opportunity to, to help influence um, those developments. So I just I hope that helps add a bit more context as well. Thank, Thank you. I, I just uh, wanted to reflect a comment from Lisa in the chat about is there that understanding centrally about just how lean the voluntary community or the VCSE sector is? Uh, many organisations with zero core funding relying entirely on project based funding, that no spare funding for additional hours for anything that falls out of service delivery. Um, so as much as people may, may want to engage with initiatives, they simply don't have the capacity. So I think that is going to be a strong theme. There is a mention of uh, funding in one of the NHS documents, but there is no there's no national guidance or um, you know promises about about funding uh, currently. So um, another point as well made by Katie and and by Lisa, um, the fact that the divide in terms of differences within Solihull is not is really no longer north south, but is really north east west with pockets of deprivations in multiple areas of Solihull, and focalising on the north south split could be unhelpful to to the future of uh, of looking at healthcare. Okay, thank you, thank you for all those observations, uh, and we will make sure we record them. So. Um, we're moving into, well, we're going to have a break and then we're going to be moving into the first breakout group, which is really trying to explore further the nature of voluntary or well, VCSE in Solihull and what already exists, what infrastructures exist um, around health. And I just, I just put a few up to get people thinking and you will know more of the partnerships that exist that, that you can begin talking about in the breakout group.
but I just wanted to emphasize place-based partnerships. So in King's host a lot of partnership working around looking at community need and community space and doing that consultation with residents about what are their priorities in terms of community activity. And not surprisingly, it's the same as the, you know, the health data tells us, child poverty, uh, nutrition for children and families, a desire for more physical activity and for that sense of community connection. But that ability for uh, community-based organisations to understand what community needs are without having an agenda for those conversations. Um, the North Solihull Voluntary Community Alliance organisations working specifically in the north of Solihull are very much focused at the moment around dementia and what is missing in terms of support and uh, intending to do more awareness sessions and looking at support around dementia cafes in the north of Solihull. Uh, Solihull Faith Forum, an old established forum which represents all of the major faiths across Solihull, uh, has always had a focus on health and is aligned um, to the Birmingham Council of Faith and Health Wellbeing Group. At the last Faith Forum that I, that I was at, uh, there was a speaker, patient, uh, expert by experience talking about diabetes, a very inspirational man called Tony Kelly, who was talking about getting the message out around preventative um, measures around diabetes type two and making sure that was going out into faith communities. So that tremendous reach, which voluntary community social enterprise sector can have. So that's just a few illustrations of community based organizations really addressing and responding to health issues and the challenge that we have of the, the, the challenge and the strength, we have a hugely diverse BCSE, large organisations, grassroots organisations, faith, social enterprises. But how does health systematically engage with what is very diverse? How can we make sure that there is an alliance which is dynamic, which is, is, send, is a conduit to those key messages about health? From, um, from the community. So that's, uh, that's the kind of discussion for the first breakout group, but we're gonna have a 10 minute break now, 10 minute comfort break, and then we're gonna go into breakout groups to look at the nature of the VCSE in Solihull and what the health priorities are, what are the inequalities that we're talking about and that, that we know about. Um, so have a good um, so the from our group in terms of local demographics and health inequalities, there was um, a consensus that sometimes it was not useful to be talking about the north south divide because there are massive po pockets of deprivation everywhere and a realization that since COVID poverty is everywhere real concerns about mental health, particularly for child for childhood and families, community mental health, and that real need to embed well-being, um, that there is uh, an older, older people is higher proportionally in Solihull than for the rest of the West Midlands. Uh, there was also a concern about dementia, raising awareness and particularly around um, ethnic, for ethnically diverse groups and a real feeling that that open door community feel has been lost uh, and a need to get just get back to people being able to access, access services when they need to and a feeling that we're sort of going backwards on that um, early intervention that we're waiting for the wheels to fall off the bus you know even more so than ever and that the just that realisation that the VCSE is really good at early intervention, but it does need the resources to do that. So that was the second part of mine, um, my, my group. So uh, over to Carol for your, for your group. OK, thank you. So um, in terms of the first question, we only did the first question. We didn't get on to the second one, I'm afraid. That was my really bad um, chairing of that group. So apologies for that. And um, there was some conversation around the fact that um, 
the sector isn't as cohesive at, at the moment as it could be and we need to find a way to operate as a partnership but there have been times when things have worked really really well and those are usually themed so we talked about the carers covid vaccination work we talked about the the infrastructure that the council has with the voluntary sector um with austin rodriguez and they have regular meetings and that kind of two-way discussion around the COVID response has worked really well. Um, we talked about the fact that there are some really small groups and some larger organisations that they might be used to formal structures and working with the public sector, for example, and in forums, but there's that kind of need to get the right people in the right place at the right time and, and really understand what we mean by that. Um, that kind of clarity around what we want to achieve so that any forums that are convened people understand the purpose of them and they know what they um, are able to contribute and really um we, we talked about the the fact that there's a lot of work that comes from the ground up so there are often gems of things that are happening on the ground that are very different to what else might be being talked about in some of these other forums that we would miss if we don't have a structure that allows us to hear those things um uh, i think that was probably about i think that's probably about it unless there's anything else from the rest of my group that i've missed Okay, thank you, Carol. So we're moving into the second group and uh, Elaine's going to do her level best to try and mix us up. Uh, we'll see how that goes on and we'll still be facilitating. So I'll just tell you all what the questions are, but they'll be repeated again. So the next one really is the more like how, how to side of this. If there is an, is an issue that health and care wants to address, how should they talk to the voluntary and community sector to address pathways locally and at system level? And the second part is who is missing today and needs to be invited to be part of the network or alliance that we build? So that's the two questions. So, um, Aline, it's over to you to try and mingle us and mix us up. Elena, you all right there? Oh, sorry, I'm talking and you can't hear me. I wasn't. <laughs> it's about to start. Lovely, thank you. Oh, I haven't put you anywhere, Katie. Kate, hang on. Anywhere will do, thanks. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So over to breakout group two. Um, I will. I'll pass over first of all to Carol this time. If you want to begin on feedback from your your session. Yes. Thank you, Jane. Um, so I think in answer to the first question, and first thing we said was that sometimes the voluntary sector have issues that they want to raise. So it needs to be seen 
the other way around as well. Re really important that it is just isn't just a kind of one way thing. Um, there was quite a lot of consensus on using existing structures where possible. So Austin Rodriguez in the council has a kind of reference group um, and that that's really worked. So is there something we can do to build upon that? Um, Part of that discussion there was about getting stronger links with the NHS because that's just with the council. Um, and there was a comment around sometimes it feels like, um, you know, the NHS is saying, well, we'll do the serious stuff and you can do the rest. And then often the sector are left to pick up issues that health can't do because of resources, etc. So but there's something there about how that about how the, the NHS are involved in that um, and what that relationship is. Um, there was definitely a consensus that people want this to work. They want the VCSE to be seen as an integral partner and, and, and real willingness to be integrated into the care system um, because they know about communities and they know what difference that, that can make if people are connected in their communities and how things can change and things can move on. So there's real willingness to get it right. Um, definite need to clarify the vision. So whatever is happening or being put on or whatever meetings are taking place etc it's got to be really clear what the what the parameters are how much influence the sector have um and 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 what they're actually turning up to really um we talked about uh groups being at different levels which we we kind of um referred to in the presentation um and also people knowing what they're signing up to and for how long so is it a two hours every week or is it a half an hour every quarter you know that makes a massive difference um we also talked about uh, in terms of uh smaller groups um and the importance of Get, hearing hearing the voice of those smaller groups and getting information out to them. Um, a lot of them are reliant on volunteers. We've, we've obviously talked already about funding and people's time, but they have got that really valuable information. In, do you want me to go on to question two, Jane? Yes, please. Yeah. So question two, um, we there were a number of groups or people that we talked about, actually. Am I OK to say people's names? <laughs> For my group, I'm assuming I am. They're all looking at me blankly. I'm going to anyway. Um, so we talked about um, the Yobs group, which is a group of local youth organisations and kind of can look at the way that that group could send a representative. And Austin knows about the, these forums. We talked about the Holidays and Activities Fund as well, which is another group that we could tap into. Um, and then we got on to talking about people that had a lot of experience in this world um, and were very knowledgeable about either what's been tried before and, and, and worked or, or what works and what doesn't. So James Voller, we talked about Judy Tollett, Dave Lane and Dave Pinwell. Um, interestingly about Dave Pinwell, although he's a counsellor now, but he's got masses of knowledge and obviously might be able to give that kind of political um, slant on things as well. And that was a feedback from our group. Thank you, Carol. Uh, so over to Deb. Um, OK, in answer to how should health and care talk to the voluntary and community sector, um, our, one of our main answers was is in as many different ways as possible, um, because the point was made, it has been made, I'm going to make it again, that not all organizations can spare two hours in an afternoon. In fact, not all organizations are available during the day. Some of them um, just um, are, are peopled by volunteers who work at, at other times. So as many different ways as possible, not um, necessarily just face to face, but um, getting things out through social media, um uh all, all all that that kind of thing to use that more more appropriately maybe a more target in a more targeted way um and and smaller groups on the ground groups need accurate data i think we all need accurate data actually and shared data is important and one of the points was that we need um maybe there needs to be a point of 
contact for sharing reliable data. So, I mean, and I would suggest that means a conversation with public health. Um, uh, and it's important that infrastructure organisations share their information. Well, Carver, in fact, shares shares their information and keeps people as up to date as they can. And um, we we just need this central source of um, or network for trusted data. Okay, moving on. Who's missing? Well, uh, one of the points was that there's no rep with your exception, Carol, there's no, there's no representation from health. And by that, it, it, it is meant the people who will be asking the questions. So that's like primary care, ICS people, um, foundation trusts, I suppose. I mean, I wouldn't expect them to be here, but it's kind of what sort of things are they going to be asking? Um, uh, local authorities <clears throat> and Solihull community network what's the role for that you know it's just about still going apparently but um you know what what's the role for that and also the health and well-being board uh, do they know what's going on how involved are they i think that's the uh it it is it is about actually you know keeping everybody informed and and it's about i mean i think we we all felt that it's about a really open conversation with all these people at all these levels and and that's not easy to do you know that we're talking about juggling clouds clouds here but 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 that doesn't mean we shouldn't try i feel we feel my group felt but i do also feel that okay that's us Okay, so I'll just add in on things, similar things. I think similar things in terms of using as many communication methods as possible, including the importance of word of mouth. And, you know, we had that kind of community champions model during COVID where people had responsibility for getting messages, having just having conversational messages, not always information um, in terms of letters or, or words. Um, so ensuring everybody is reached, using the existing networks in Solihull, building on what is already there. There was quite a lot of compliments for the Birmingham Neighbourhood Network, but um, not that we've got anything like that in Solihull, but there was talk about what's happened to that localities model of East, West, North. But then people also talked about when you have all these different local networks, it's difficult to cover them all. But just realising that there are going to be those different engagement methods, the local, the place based, and then that representation at, at system level. Um, at the moment, often statutory organisations just contact individual organisations one at a time. And that desire for, some, for, for a broad alliance, a forum that is up to lots of different types of organisations. Same on infrastructure. And we're very happy to disseminate um, information as an infrastructure organization who's missing mental health such a crucial one we felt that mental there's not a, a mental health specific organization here like mind or rethink the small grassroots organizations that bring that innovation based organization aren't here um, diversity in terms of you know ethnically diverse community communities and re representation and on the wider determinants, housing and transport were mentioned as, cru as crucial aspects if we're looking at a whole, a whole systems approach. So that was um, everybody who's missing. So I realise we're kind of running at a pace now, four, mi four minutes to kind of finish up here. Thank you so much for all of your feedback. We will try and bring it together and disseminate out to you to reflect what, what has been said. Um, so on the presentation, I won't put it up again, but there's a, a slide on useful links. If you do want to read more about this, there is a paper which is about guidance on partnerships with the BCSE, a link to that and a link to one of the areas that's a bit more established around partnership, which is Humber, Coast and Vale. Uh, if you want more information, there's my email address. Carol Herity sent us lots of updates. So, you know, if you want that bedtime reading, just ask. Um, the next steps, we're going to pull together all the notes from this meeting, 
going to meet with um, Stephanie Bloxham from BBSC to talk about where, where we are at Solihull and Birmingham, because um, we need to be thinking about this dynamic alliance and representation at a, at a leadership level. Um, they are in Birmingham, they're thinking about their next the follow up meeting, which is very much talking about that representation at a leadership level and terms of reference. So there will be a follow up meeting to this. Um, unless you don't want to be invited, we will automatically invite people who've signed up to this event. So this is very much the beginnings of the conversation. So we will keep you abreast. Um, and all I can say is thank you very much for your time today, Appre appreciate it, and also that enthusiasm to be very much involved in the in the discussion and how things shape up for the future. Aline, you look like you want to say something there. Lisa's raised her hand, I don't know if uh, you wanted to say something, Lisa. Thanks, Aline. Yes, Jane, I wanted to know how do we ensure we hear? about future funding or commissioning opportunities in connection with this? Uh, well, if you if you all have, I think what it said, when you signed up to this, it said, are you happy to share your contact details? So if that is the case, I will just keep this group as a mailing list around ICS. So any information that, you know, any events you will be invited to, as far as updating the, the whole VCS about next stages, we will do that through our newsletter, through our website, through our social media. Um, so I, ho I hope that answers that question. So if that's everything from everybody, thank you. And thanks very much to Deb and um, Carol for trying to explain what is a very complicated situation as simply as possible. And there's a, uh, another a question. Does anyone have an email for Stuart? I think that is Kate asking for that. So if anybody does, can you pop it in the chat? Okay, so thanks everybody. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thanks, Jane. Bye.